Hi guys, my name is Carla. I am Forever Jetlag and welcome back to my channel. We are back with Q&A part two. Today we're gonna talk more about the questions that you guys send me, the questions that are related more to appearance and to the requirements regarding your appearance. So let's get started. <laughs> My name is Carla, I am from Romania and I used to work for Emirates Airlines for four years. I stopped when COVID started, but I don't regret a second of it. It was the best decision I ever made and I am very happy I had the chance to do it. So whoever is thinking about it, I always advise them to just go for it, try your luck and who knows, you might get to travel the world. Now let's start with part two of the Q&A. The first question I have is regarding your personality a little bit. The first part of the question says that this person is an introvert and they are a bit nervous about having to interact with so many people. I used to be an introvert as well and I still am, but Emirates has helped me develop my skills with regards to communication with other people and especially customers, but also colleagues. Having this experience is gonna help you develop a lot because you will have to talk to a lot of people, whether colleagues or customers, and you will meet millions of people. Every flight you fly with different people, you have different passengers, it's never the same people. So you will learn to adjust to each change that you're gonna have. And this will help you get out of your shell a little bit and be a little bit more sociable, be more open and don't be scared to interact with other people. So if you're an introvert, don't worry. I used to be one as well and now I'm doing YouTube videos, so it's gonna be fine. And the second part of the question is regarding the English level that you are at. This person is saying that their English is not 100%. They are worried about that. The only language requirement that Emirates has is English. The whole interview is going to be in English and there is also an English written test during the interview. My advice is if you're not confident with your English, start practicing, maybe watch some movies in English with English subtitles so you can read and listen at the same time. Also Duolingo is a good app for practicing your language skills. Maybe try to read a book in English or blogs or audiobooks. Anything that is in English will help you. Try to practice, try to improve your English so when you go for the interview you are confident because maybe your English level is good but when you get nervous, when you get self-conscious you might freeze and you might forget your words, you might make some mistakes. So it's better to be confident with your English level and practice as much as possible before the interview. Now, the next question is from a guy and he is asking if Emirates is hiring bold men. And yes, Emirates does hire bold men. I actually have friends that are working as cabin crew and they are bold. The only requirement for guys for hair is that when you have a hairstyle, your scalp should not be visible. If you decide to shave your head or if you are bold, that's fine. As long as your whole head is bold. If you have a hairstyle, you know, the classic hairstyle where the hair is shorter on the sides and longer at the top, it's fine as long as on the sides where the hair is shorter, there is no scalp visible. So it has to be a little bit long, not too short. But yes, Emirates does hire bold men and that is not gonna cut your chances of getting the job. And now staying on the subject of hair, this time we're moving to girls. I got a question regarding short hair for girls. This person was asking me for the CV pictures if she has short hair, that means above the shoulders how should it be styled? Here Emirates has very clear guidelines when you have short hair for girls. For the CV pictures, I don't think it's that important 
as long as your hair is neat, not all over your face, not, it's not covering your face, it's all fine. As long, like I said, it's neat, uh, it looks clean and tidy. Once you start flying, there is other rules with regards to short hair. Your hair should not touch the color of the jacket. If it touches the color, then you need to somehow put it in a short ponytail or do it with bobby pins and it has to be over the ears for the cv pictures you don't have to follow all these guidelines as long as it looks neat tidy and clean it's all good the next question i got also has two parts this person is telling me that they reached the final interview everything went great but then they got the rejection email and they were wondering if eye color has anything to do with it because her left eye is light brown and her right eye is dark brown. Emirates doesn't discriminate on appearance. It doesn't discriminate on skin color. It doesn't discriminate on hair color, eye color, nothing. And especially if you have a special feature like this, Emirates would be proud to hire you. They can, you know, show you off and you are a special addition to their team. However, and this brings me to the next question from the next person that says as well, they sent their application and they haven't received any answer. And why is that? Emirates has different requirements as to who they need to hire. They might hold an open day or an assessment day and hundreds of people show up and they might choose a few from those people, but from HR and from management, they have clear instructions as to who they need to hire. Sometimes they need people of certain nationalities because they need language speakers. Sometimes they need more male crew. Sometimes they need more female crew. So all these requirements, you cannot know them when you go for your interview. They will never make them public. So if you reach the final interview and then you get a rejection email, that means maybe you didn't do anything wrong. You feel like everything went well, but you were just not what they're looking for now. So my advice, especially if you reach the final interview, is to try again. Because they, that means they saw something in you, they really liked you. It's just that right now they have instructions to maybe hire only male crew or hire only crew from uh, certain countries. Try again, don't lose hope because you never know and Emirates is very strict with this policy of not telling you what you did wrong or not telling you if you did something wrong. So they have you try again and they have you keeping that hope that you are going to get the job. And I believe that's really good because you should keep that hope. If that's what you want to do, just keep it up and try again if you didn't get it the first time. There's people that tried seven, eight times until they got the job. So just keep trying. Now, the next topic we're going to talk about is scars. I got a few questions asking about scars. This is a bit of a sensitive topic because I cannot tell you, yes, you have a chance or no, you don't have a chance. This depends where your scar is and how big is it, if it's visible, if it's in aesthetic. It's a lot of variables that I cannot give you a yes or no answer. What I can tell you is that if your scar is not visible while wearing the uniform, then you definitely have a chance. Don't worry about it because a person told me they have a scar on their knee. The knee is covered while wearing the uniform. For guys especially, you have long pants, so nobody's gonna see that scar. And for girls, the skirt is also below the knee and you have stockings, so your scar is not gonna be noticeable scars on arms or fingers or face this i cannot tell you exactly if it's gonna be an issue or not because it depends from scar to scar if it's like i said if it's visible if it's in aesthetic if it's big if it's small if it's i don't know different uh, descriptions my advice again is just try your luck go for the interview because you have nothing to lose and you never know if you don't try and also for girls, normally the uniform is short sleeve, but if they really like you and you have a scar on your arm, for example, that maybe they don't want you to show, there is a special uniform. It's very rare to see this crew, but there is a special uniform with a shirt with long sleeves. So that is another possibility. I'm saying this just to encourage you and tell you that there is always solutions to any problem. So. 
don't get discouraged and don't think that just because you have a scar you have no chance of, get, of getting the job if they like everything about you they will make it work and they will give you solutions for your problem so again just go for it moving on to piercings I got questions also about piercings. Now, I'm gonna include here tattoos as well. Even though I didn't get any questions about tattoos, I wanna make it clear that piercings for girls, it's only allowed to have one earring in each ear. That's it. For guys, no piercings allowed. So if you have any extra piercings, that's fine. You just have to remove it when you go for the interview or when you go for a flight. I do have extra piercings and every flight I was removing them and on layovers or on my days off, I was putting them on. So it's fine. You just have to remove it. For guys, no piercings allowed. Like I said, tattoos, they are allowed as long as they're not visible when wearing the uniform. Again, for girls, the shirt is short sleeve. So any tattoos on your arm, they are not allowed. And on your legs as well, below the knee, they are not allowed. For guys, they are a bit luckier because they have long sleeve shirts, so they can have arm tattoos, no problem, as long as they are not on your hands on, or on your neck, face, and that's pretty much it for guys. Girls, they have a, a bit of a stricter policy because of the uniform, but as long as they, your tattoos are hidden, that's all good. And your piercings is as well. Again, for girls, only one earring in each ear. And for guys, no piercings allowed. Another question that I saw is very popular and I, I noticed there's a little bit of confusion is the reach test or the height test. Emirates has a clear policy about that. Your height should be of minimum 160 meters. And then the reach test is when you put your arm up, you need to reach two meters and 12 centimeters height. You can be on your tiptoes. You don't have to reach properly as in to grab it. You just have to reach it. On your tiptoes is fine, but 2.12 is mandatory and 160 meters your normal height. Now, there are some exceptions that I saw on flights. I flew with people that were not 160 meters, but they had long arms and they could reach 212. So if you can reach 212 and you are just missing one or two centimeters, I think it's worth a try. You should still go for the interview and try your luck. Just see what happens because again, you have nothing to lose. And staying on the subject of height, I noticed some of you are curious about my height. I am 168 meters tall. I don't remember my reach with my arm up. I passed the test because I have long arms, but yeah, my height is 168 meters. And now the last but not least question of the day. This person is saying that they work every day and I believe they don't have access to their phone. And they are saying, what if I miss my golden call? If you miss your golden call, it's not the end of the world. They will try to reach you again. If they cannot, they will send you an email. So uh, it's not like if you miss the golden call, that's it, you missed your chance to work for them. No, they will try again. And my advice is always watch out for numbers that start with 971 because that's the UAE country code. And if you see a missed call from that number, try to do your best to answer the next time you get a phone call from them because it's an experience and you shouldn't miss that. The way they congratulate you, the way you get nervous when you talk to them, all of that is a great experience. And I talked about mine in my video about the interview experience. I'm going to put it right here so you can go watch it. I don't want you guys to miss that experience. So it's not the end of the world. You still get the job. It's fine. They're going to reach you some other way. But my advice is do your best to get the call because you don't want to miss that experience. And with this, we have reached the end of this Q&A. Thank you all for your questions. Thank you for the amazing support that I saw. 
I didn't expect my videos to get such a reach and you guys to like my videos. I just started doing it out of desire to help people, but I didn't expect so many of you to like my videos and see them. So thank you all. I will continue doing videos. I will continue trying to help all of you. Some of you even texted me on Instagram and that's fine. If you have more personal questions, if you need more advice, don't hesitate. My Instagram is always in the description of every video. So you can also text me there or you can comment on these videos. I reply to each and every one of you always. If there's anything that you would like me to talk about next, if you have any suggestions or more questions, again, I'm open to anything. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and next week I am gonna come back with a surprise video, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't watched my previous videos, go ahead and watch them because I share a lot of information there. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!